it's like I said, it's going to read from our prophet tonight. I won't make you pronounce his name. Okay. You got it, Daryl? Thank you. The Old Testament, yep. Okay, thank uh, back, you. Can you want anybody to read it for anybody? Okay, okay, thank you. Excuse me. And our, uh, I'm not thinking our Janora is in France, which gives us a chance to pick a couple of hymns tonight. You just said it. Pastor? Yes. How do you pronounce that? Um, Old Testament? Yeah. Have a, I think that's a back word. Those names are always neat sometimes. So I'm looking, at, I'm looking at the hymns we're singing tomorrow morning. They're not really those uh, most familiar hymns that we often like to sing tonight. Um, we walk by faith and not by sight. Yeah, it's beautiful, beautiful sentiment. I don't think we know that hymn very well, though. Um, let me see. But it's a chance for us to sing some of our favorites, too. Um, <coughs> Last week, I think we sang How Great Thou Art, and we, did. Um, we sang uh, Hooks Finlandia. How about uh, a lot of good men, Finlandia? And, yeah, the Finnish national anthem is on. Um, Wind feet, slide over. No, it's on the next time. Okay, Lisa, what did you just suggest? Abide with me. Abide with me, that's a fun one to sing. That's an evening hymn, so that's one we all can look at the same. Okay, that's okay. How about, for, how about a second hymn? Anybody have a favorite hymn you'd like to sing? Is that where it is? to pick though. We'll save that for next week. Okay. We're going to start with the Bible with me. That's 878. How's our, how's our Avery report this week? She's good. She's a TV star. I saw her on the news and a big smile she had on her face. And God bless her going through that chemotherapy. She's, um, if you don't know, I'm going to get this right, eight years old? Seven. Seven years Just old. Just turned seven. And uh, doing chemotherapy. It's a uh, and radiation, wow. yeah. Wow. So uh, their granddaughter. We got her in our prayers every week. Eight seven eight. Let's uh, begin with the uh, first two stanzas. Is it five thirty already? I think it is. Eight seven eight. It is. It is. It is. Eight seven eight. Abide with me, fast falls the eventide. The darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, help of the helpless soul abide. I need thy presence. 
myself, my pride and stay can be. Through cloud and sunshine, oh, abide with me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily praise your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty and merciful Lord indeed gives to you pardon, peace, forgiveness of all your sin. Amen. Let's uh, turn to the back of our bulletin. The um, Old Testament reading this morning is uh, this evening. Good evening, right? Old Testament reading, Habakkuk, chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. Not because of our works, 
but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, and which now has been manifested through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, for which I was appointed a preacher and apostle and teacher, which is why I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. Follow the pattern of the sound words that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. By the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, guard and good deposit entrusted to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I invite you to stand as able as we hear are words from our Lord Jesus here written at Luke chapter 17. Jesus says to his disciples, temptations to sin are sure to come, but woe to the one through whom these temptations come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were cast into the sea than that he should cause one of these little ones to sin. Pay attention to yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him. If he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in the day and turns to you seven times saying, I repent, you must forgive him. The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if you had faith like the grain of a mustard seed, you could say to the mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea. <laughs> and it would obey you. Will any one of you who has a servant plowing or keeping sheep say to that servant when he has come in from the field, come at once and recline at the table? Will he not rather say to him, prepare supper for me and dress properly and serve me while I eat and drink and afterward you will eat and drink? Does he thank the servant because he did what he was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you are commanded, say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. No one has been a, a servant like our Lord. Let's uh, rejoice in what he's done for us. As together we speak here the Apostles' Creed <coughs> from our worship page, the bottom of that front page. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Be seated, friends. <laughs> so when I uh, come to worship anticipating preaching, I mean, what I always want to do is I want to hear what God has to say in his word. I want to know what the story is in that scripture, you know, what's happening there? Because I want to find out, you know, what God has to say to me and how he's going to change my story. So as today we begin reading from 2 Timothy, there is a great story behind this little letter. The past three weeks we've been hearing from Timothy's, uh, or the first letter uh, of Timothy, Paul's first letter to Timothy. And as I was telling you a couple of weeks ago, I think I preached on it two out of those three weeks, um, Paul at that time was under house arrest in Rome. He was accused of causing these riots, you know, getting people excited against the uh, Roman and Greek gods. Well, apparently his trial finally came and he was judged and not guilty because when we read what happened, it's pretty clear that Timothy got free and he actually got to go back out of Rome 
into Turkey to Ephesus, the great center of Christianity in that land, and visit his friend, the younger pastor who he had left there, uh, Timothy. And in fact, I'm pretty sure that Paul even then got to, to finish his heart's desire. He went to the very end of the Roman Empire. He got clear to Spain to tell the good news of Jesus as far as he could imagine going. And then he headed back to the Roman capital, the great center of the world, as he saw it in his day. And there, it was a whole different environment three years later. Now, Paul is not under house arrest, but he is actually down in the Caesar's dungeon. And he is accused of spreading an illegal religion. What had happened in that meantime was on the 18th of July in the year 64, there was a great fire that spread across Rome. and Three-fourths of that massive city was burnt, a fourth, a one-fourth of it down to the ground, this huge inferno where thousands of people died, at least 200,000 were struck homeless. And then the rumors started. What was their Caesar? What was Nero doing as Rome burned? We still joke about that today. What did he do? We say Nero fiddled. Well, they didn't actually fiddle. They had harps. And Nero considered himself a great actor. So it's possible that at some point during this week-long fire, he was singing a dirge. But it finally was getting under his skin because people were blaming him. The fire had cleared a huge slum, and Nero then confiscated that land to expand his own imperial gardens and his royal palaces, and the population was angry at Nero. He had to find someone else to blame. And so we have this, not from the Christians, we got the great Roman historian Tacitus. He was about eight years old when this huge fire happened, but he researched the records and rewrote his history of Rome. He says, Nero had to find a scapegoat. And there was this one great group of suspects. Were these people patriots? <laughs> there was this group in Rome that refused even to say the basic pledge. Caesar is Lord. This gang would not even go to the emperor's temple and offer just a simple touch of incense as a sacrifice. It didn't sound very patriotic. Were they religious? Rome, like most of the empire, was very permissive. Lots and lots of gods were worshipped. But this group would not go to any of these temples. Not patriotic, not religious. Were they friendly? Well, you could invite these kind of people over to your home for a neighborhood orgy, and they would refuse to come. The Romans couldn't believe it. What's with these people? They were weird. I mean, they were strange people in Rome. Uh, the Jews had always been like that. You know, they didn't seem very patriotic. They had their own God. And, but this group was even stranger. There were rumors about these people that every week they gathered for what they called their love feast. And outsiders were not welcome to come and eat with them at the heart of this love feast. It was kind of secretive. And what were they eating at the love feast? The rumors were that these people said they were eating body and blood. Cannibals! <laughs> Who are these people? And if you pushed them, they would say it was the body and blood of their God. What kind of a God? Nero needs to blame somebody for the fire. Here's Paul down in his dungeon sending what turns out to be his final letter. From verse 1 of our text. From Paul, the Apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God. <laughs> Already at the start he's saying, you know, there's somebody on a throne higher than Nero. I'm sent by Christ Jesus by the will of God according to the promise of life. He has no fear of death. This life promised in Christ Jesus. I write to Timothy, my beloved child in the faith, 
Grace and mercy and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Timothy, I thank this God whom I serve, whom I serve just as did my ancestors and with a clear conscience. He's already got, if you'll read between the lines here, his defense in order. My ancestors had been worshiping this God, the same God, for generations. And the Romans were fine with it. The Jews have always been looking forward to the Christ. That's what I believe. And Paul can make this, this amazing claim himself as one who was born a Jew, but born from parents who themselves were Jewish Roman citizens. So just like I can be, you know, of my own ethnic descent, an American, here's Paul, a Jew who is a citizen, full-blooded, of Rome. He's fearless, both before the state and before the Lord. I thank God, Timothy, as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. I remember your tears when we parted. I long to see you again that I might be filled with joy. I reminded of your sincere faith, this faith that dwells first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I'm sure this faith that dwells in you as well. For this reason, I remind you, fourth time he says it, what does he want Timothy to do? Rome has burned, Paul's in the dungeon, and can you believe that this is what Paul says? I remind you to fan into flame <laughs> the great gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of hands. Isn't that wild? He's accused of being an incendiary, so what does he say? Fan it into flame! <laughs> Timothy, God gave you a flame. What is that flame inside of Timothy? Holy Spirit. Yeah, the Spirit had given Timothy faith. So the first thing, Timothy, remember that faith that came, you know, I was, when I was young, fighting against Jesus, Paul remembers, but not you. Your grandmother Eunice, your, your mother Lois, they taught you. And as soon as you heard of Jesus, you believed that he was the one we were waiting for. You've had that faith in your family. You've had that faith in your heart. Remember to fan into fan flame this gift that God gave you. And then he makes this strange phrase that says, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. So this is something that Paul referred to in his first letter to Timothy. That day when Paul and the other leaders of the house churches in Ephesus and all the little towns around there came and they actually, you know, they placed their hands on Timothy. What do we call that in today's church? They ordained him because Paul was leaving on his missionary journey, so they needed one to be recognized as the leader of that area. We would call it like a bishop of that church. Okay, so I'm doing a lot of history here. That's an old, old story. What does any of that have to do with us? I want you to notice that in this time when the heat is on, Paul encourages Timothy Recognize two very simple things. Remember first who you are. You've got this faith in your heart, this burning of the spirit that God gave you. This is your identity. You are a believer in Christ. This is what lasts when everything else goes away. You know, Your jobs, your relationships... Your hobbies, whatever, your friends, they can come and go, but the thing that identifies you forever is your connection with this Christ. This is your identity. And secondly, not just who you are, but recognize what you are to do. When we put hands on you, you had a calling, you had a vocation. God gave you an activity to do. The Spirit inspires you to make this difference in the world. I think we're just like Timothy in that we've got that fire of faith in our lives, and yet we're very different from Timothy. I've got a, I've got a picture of a uh, fire breather up there. I don't think anybody is called to that vocation here, probably, right? Anybody work in a circus? I don't think anybody here is the uh, Bishop of Ephesus. And yet this thing that Paul is teaching Timothy is very true for us. The question is, 
What is God calling you to do in your world today? And there's all kinds of different roles, you know. I am a son, I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm a pastor, I'm a neighbor to Pete and Liz, I'm a friend to a lot of people, I hope, I'm a citizen. We have lots of different callings in our lives. But the deal is, recognize who you are, your identity, and let that then mold what you get to do in God's world. Let the Spirit fire you up, fan it into flame. As you do what God calls you to do, sharing his love, speaking his forgiveness into this world lost in the darkness. Verse 7, for God gave us a spirit, not of fear. <laughs> I see the sin within me and I get terrified, oh, I'm going to mess up. I see how the world is so twisted and I'm afraid what it's going to do to me and my kids, you know. There's hellfire out there. But we do not have a spirit of fear. All these things, we know the one who has conquered them. God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. So this is why I love preaching this text. Did you know that you've got that spirit of power? That you've got real authority in this world? You don't have to be afraid of anything. What did Jesus say? All authority has been given to me, and so go. You're mine. You know, you have nothing to fear. You've got real power. Especially when Paul talks about authority here, he's usually thinking of that power to unlock heaven. I talked about that a couple of weeks ago. When we forgive somebody, whether it's what they've done against us or this guilt that is them, you know, that's just a chain to them in their lives, and we tell them they're forgiven, we've got God's authority. It really happens. That's an amazing power that this world doesn't see. We've got power. Secondly, we've got love. <laughs> God so loved the world. That means God so loved me. That means I've got this love in my heart that I can share with the world. It's not about me and how weak my love. It's about his love. We've got something we can really give to people. Power and love and self-control. We're not going to live in a panic about all that we can't do. I love that old uh, prayer, beloved, in the 12-step uh, groups. It actually comes from Reinhold Niebuhr, an old uh, pastor in Germany back in the 50s. God give me the serenity to accept what I cannot change, the courage to change what I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. <laughs> Isn't that a beautiful prayer? Give me serenity to accept it if I can't change it. Courage to change what I can. Wisdom to know. Power and love and self-control. Therefore, Timothy, do not be shamed of this testimony about our Lord. Rome says it's illegal, but you know what? It's going to last, this good news of Jesus. Don't be ashamed of me, Jesus' prisoner here. But Timothy, share in my suffering for the gospel. Isn't that strange? What an invitation. <laughs> Come and suffer with me. <laughs> what kind of God suffers under Pontius Pilate? <laughs> What kind of God leaves his great missionary, Paul, down in a dungeon? What kind of God calls you to follow him? To take up, yes, even your cross? Is that a nice invitation? Can't you say, you know, take up your surfboard? <laughs> And yet, don't be ashamed. Grab your share. Fearlessly, tell somebody who's broken about that good news of Jesus. It might go great. They might kick you in the teeth. It doesn't matter. 
If somebody's unlovable, love them. If you've got that opportunity, they may completely change and bless you for it. Or maybe you won't see a change. But God will be changing you, making you to be more and more like his son. You can follow this Jesus, says Paul, only in the power of God. It's Jesus' way, you know? This crazy stuff he gives us to do in our lives. It's Jesus' way of him pulling us into his story. We make our history as we follow him. And so then just to read the rest of this text, starting at verse 9, and the words a little bit more simply, maybe explaining a bit along the way. Paul says God rescued us. He saved us. He called us to a holy calling where we actually get to do God's own work in the world. And it's not because we were so good with the work we had done, but because of God's own purpose and grace. This grace and love that he gave us in Christ Jesus already before the ages had begun. We're down in the weeds and going, what's going on in my life? But see, God is the setup artist. Already before he created the world, he knew how he was going to lead you through and the blessing that you would be. Long purpose. Verse 10, and now everyone can see that God has appeared. Our Savior Jesus Christ, he who put to death, death itself, this Jesus who brought life, this never dying resurrection life, shining in the light. For this good news, Jesus picked me. And didn't Jesus also pick you, Timothy? And you, my readers. I am Jesus' herald. An apostle sent by Jesus, a teacher all about Jesus. That's why I'm now suffering down here in Nero's dungeon, accused of spreading this illegal religion, but I am not ashamed because God provides. Right now, I know whom I believed. I'm convinced that Jesus is able to guard until the resurrection day that good news that he has entrusted to me. Again, Timothy, when you hear that Nero has plucked me from this dungeon and taken me to death, don't think that's the end. My good news, says Paul, is not mine. Jesus gave it to me. Jesus gave it to you. Jesus will guard that good news, that it will be told to the very end of the world, to the very last day, to reach the very final person who will believe. It will go on and on. Jesus will guard his good news. So follow that pattern of sound teaching you've heard from me, the pattern of faith, the pattern of love in Christ Jesus. By the Holy Spirit, there's the fire again, who dwells within us. Guard God's word. It's the deposit. It's the rich down payment on the resurrection that Jesus has entrusted to you. Got to practice my little um, slides for tomorrow. But the picture there shows what was going on. Drawn from the words again of Tacitus, that great Roman historian, himself not a Christian, he says, Nero punished in every way these notorious depraved Christians. Their deaths were made farcical. Nero provided his own royal gardens for the spectacles, and he exhibited displays in the circus racetrack. Nero himself mixing with the crowd, or standing in a chariot's costume, a charioteer costume, in his chariot. The Christians were dressed with wild animal skins and torn to pieces by dogs, or they were nailed to crosses, or they were covered in pitch and turned to torches and ignited after the dark, so many that they substituted for the daylight. This is what's happening outside the dungeon, Paul. He knows that Peter has already been crucified. He knows that he is accused now of being the leader of these firebrands, these Rome burners. And so he sends his final words. Timothy, live the faith. You're on fire, buddy. 
Come on, fan it into flame. It's a gift that God gave to you. Don't be ashamed. Even if you have to suffer for God's good news. I'm glad that's not our world. <laughs> I get anxious about, you know, who are we going to elect next, you know? I'm glad Nero's not on the ballot. <laughs> but it's true in our own world. That's a story long ago, far away. But in our own world, it's for us. Who are you? Can you grab it? This faith he's given to you. The fire of the Spirit. What are you going to do? Telling his story. Jesus, remind us who we are. Fix our faith on you. Jesus, show us what we can do in our day, make our calling clear, Lord. And lead us to live for you today, even to that life immortal. We pray in your holy name, Lord. Amen. God bless and keep you, friends, as you too follow our risen Savior. We've got um, prayers again in our bulletin, folks. You can pray for through the week. And um, Judy reminds us to add a prayer again for her friend Mark, who has been taken back to the hospital in Orlando again. Yeah. Yeah. Are there um, other prayers that you'd like to add tonight? Please, Carolyn. Um, pray for Pam and Dave. I talked last week. Dave said that they were going on a cruise with the hospital people today. Okay. And hopefully that they will encounter Matthew the Apostle, not Matthew the Hurricane. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's, I text him, Concordia will be praying. Okay. Over. That he's safe out there. Okay. Mm -hmm. I thought I heard that one wasn't coming our way. I hope so. It's no fun to be on the waves. No, but where they uh, are. Oh, okay. Peace and comfort for my mother, Eileen. Eileen. Faithful son, Mark. Same thing. Peace and comfort to my mom. I think I just took you off of our prayer page, Mark, after a couple of weeks. We were giving God thanks for your, uh, miracles, right? Miracles happen in the here and now. They weren't reserved for 2000. Yeah. <laughs> Because this is the, the second time now that they say cancer-free, right? That's right. Amazing. Other prayers? Please, Julie. Gloria. Okay. Okay, Gloria, Julie's friends. Josh. Okay, for Tom. Thanks, Josh. Oh, please, Alfredo. Prayer for you. We're still waiting for those test results, too, aren't, aren't we, Alfredo? Okay. Let's stand and go to prayer. Jesus Christ, we do give you thanks and praise for the flame of the Spirit you have placed into our hearts that we can know you in faith. We thank you for that flame of activity where you give each of us our own unique opportunities following you to be called into service in this world where we work, where we play with family and friends, with our neighbors, Lord even with the strangers you've put into our paths. So many opportunities, Lord. Give us the wisdom to know where we can make a difference as we share the bounty, not of our own heart, but of yours. The mercy, the forgiveness, the new life that you have for all. Lord, in your mercy. We do, Lord, remember the many places in the world where Christians are persecuted for uh, following you as were your servants in Rome back in the years 64 to 68. 
we ask, Lord, that you would protect and we ask, Lord, that you would guard, but especially, Lord, that you would fire up their faith, that they too would be reaching out with your kindness to their neighbors and standing firm in their profession of you, the Lord of all. Help us to make opportunity of our freedoms and bless those who are a blessing to us. Enable us to be a blessing, even to turn the hearts of enemies towards you. We entrust into your care our president, Congress, judiciary, our local leaders, our <coughs> armed forces, remembered for you, our Pam and Dave and all those traveling. We thank you for those who serve us in their vocations in so many ways. And again, ask, Lord, that you would lead us to be neighbors to those in need. Lord, in your mercy, you know the needs of those who come to you with uh, wounds in their families, in their hearts, in their very bodies. We do remember before you little Avery. We pray for Anita, for Anthony, Anna, Jeannie, and Erica, Barbara, Jeffrey, Alfreda, Joseph, Bill, Doug, Dawn, for Sandy, uh, Donna Jo, and Tom, Eileen, and Jan, and Gloria, for Tom, the many more known, Lord, to us. The millions that break your heart, sealing what sin and death and the devil do. Come as the risen one with your power, with your mercy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, that you do feed our faith in this sacrament, that you give us your own body and blood to eat. As your people washed clean in baptism, we're bold to approach the throne, praying what you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks for his glory. We give thanks. We rejoice in his presence. Thanks and praise be to you, O Father. You did send your own son into this world to be a man, born of a woman, to die for us on a cross that was made by us. He came for us. Help us to accept his coming. He walked among us, a man on our earth and our world of conflict, and commanded us to remember his death, his death which gives to us life, and to wait for him until he comes again in glory. We remember his death, we live by his presence, we wait for his coming. Our Lord Jesus, that very night that he was betrayed, took the Passover bread, and when he thanked his heavenly Father, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this as often as you eat it, remembering me. In the same way, Jesus took the cup after supper, and when he given thanks, he gave that to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This cup is the New Testament, my own blood shed for you, the forgiveness of your sin. Do this as often as you drink it, remembering me. Therefore, remembering Jesus' death, believing in his rising from the grave, Affirming his presence now in this place, we obey his command, we await, we await the gift of himself. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Send down on us, O Father, that spirit of life and power, glory and love, that in this holy communion we may be made one with Christ and he with us, and that we might remain faithful members of his body until we eat with him in his heavenly kingdom. Come, risen Lord, live in us that he may live in you. Now with all the faithful ever were, are, and will be, with all the creation in all time, with joy we say, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, all space and all time show forth your glory, now and always. Amen. Let's come to the uh, first, oh boy, three pews. I think only three pews, I think. And then the back of the real file will do the third group from the side. <coughs> Quite so proud of the first three pews, please. Welcome.
and cleanse at Jesus' table. Take and eat, Carolyn, the very body of the risen one, which he gladly gave you on his cross for your forgiveness and honor. Take and eat, Lord. The true body of the Lord Jesus gladly given to you for you, the forgiveness of your sin. True body of the Lord Jesus for you. body and blood, our Lord Jesus, strengthens you and strengthens you in this faith, now to life everlasting. So go with Jesus' peace. Jesus' table. Pete, take and eat the true body of the risen Lord Jesus. Glad to give him for you, surely. Forgiveness for you. Truly, Jesus promises this is my body for you. Forgiveness of this. He is merely the true body of the resurrected Lord Jesus. Which is glad to give you the Shift you with the forgiveness of your sins. So Jesus here comes with his body and blood to strengthen you with your faith. Now to life everlasting. Go. Welcome to our dear Lord Jesus. This is taken from Jesus' promises. This is my body. For you, the forgiveness of your sins. Who's Jesus' promises? This is my body. The forgiveness of your sins. This body of our resurrection. Here with his body and blood, Jesus strengthens you in his faith for life everlasting. Go with his peace.
let's stand on the back of our uh, bulletin, our worship page, rather, it says, um, we give God thanks. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. And His steadfast love lasts forever. My soul give thanks to the Lord. All my being bless His holy name. My soul give thanks to the Lord, and never forget all His blessings. It is He who forgives all your guilt. He heals every one of your ills. He redeems your life from the grave. He crowns you with love and compassion. He fills your life with good things, renewing your youth like an eagle. Give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, all His works, in every place where He rules. My soul, give thanks to the Lord. Give praise to the Father Almighty, to the Son, Jesus Christ, the Lord, to the Spirit who dwells in our hearts, both now and forever. Amen. So in peace, serve the Lord, you are free. The blessings of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you always. Amen. Beautiful Savior, it's in 537, 537. Let's sing the first and the third stanzas, one and three of him, 537. Beautiful Savior, King of creation, Son of God and Son of Man, truly I love Thee, truly I serve Thee, light of my soul, my joy, my crown. There is the sunshine, there Thank you. 